A significant California artist, Jules Tavernier, the significance of California art from Myla Gonzalez. Jules Tavernier. On one occasion, a man entered his studio and asked about the blank canvases that surrounded him. Yes, I am an artist, a great artist. And your pictures? Here, where my artist's pictures should be, in my head and in my heart. When will you put it on canvas? Well, who can say? Possibly never. But always I have it here in my head, here in my heart. Once on canvas, it is gone from me. Someone carries it away. It is mine no more. Easy, but as Jules Severinier traveled through the United States, he began to lay the foundation of his influence he later stamped upon California art history. His versatility in the arts and unpredictable ways made him a legend, both loved and loathed by many. He could paint in oils, watercolor, monochrome, pastels, and was able to create miniatures to great scene paintings and was described as a wonder of composition, draftsmanship, and color. His impetuous nature and disdain for money and materialistic possessions always put him in and out of debt as the press dubbed him the Bohemian of the Bohemians. In the following paintings, Tavernier successfully captures the luminescence and radiance of light, conjuring up a sense of importance and necessity at that particular time. At the time he set foot onto San Francisco dirt in 1875, California was already engrossed in the wealth of French influences due to the influx of the 30,000 French pioneers during the California Gold Rush. The beloved Bohemian may have captured the hearts of many despite the vexation others harbored with regard to this colorful character. With that, Jules certainly made an impact as a free spirit, which both aided and impeded upon his career. Multiple run-ins with disgruntled clients from supposedly kicking through a canvas, painting, or stabbing it with a knife, whatever story you wish to believe, to not painting a commission at all, put him on an unfavorable list. Instead, he looked to the overindulgence of pleasantries of spirits instead. Born of Anglo and French parents, Tavernier was born in Paris, France in 1844. He expressed interest in art at a very young age. Under the tutelage of Historical French painter Félix Barrios, also a teacher of Edward Degas, Tavernier gained local recognition for his work, as he also showed in the prestigious Paris Salon. There, he delved a bit into the Barbizon style, which aimed at its tonal quality, softness of form, and loose brushwork. In 1870, he volunteered as an artist and war correspondent in the Franco-Prussian War. After the war, he briefly worked as an illustrator and engraver in London. He engaged in woodcut prints, engraving, and cartoons. Working for several newspapers, one in particular, Harper's Weekly, sent him to New York in 1871. From there, he and fellow artist Paul Franzeni sketched for the newspaper. They traveled west through Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and finally California, documenting with drawings and paintings, capturing the significance of the Native American people and experiences encountered on the way, later becoming an important record of history in the United States. Upon arriving in San Francisco, he delved quickly into the California art scene. He immediately became a member of the San Francisco Art Association and Bohemian Club, Armed with multiple contacts to welcome him and advance his career, he chose to stay modest and stay at cheap establishments with a good north light, a gathering place for artists alike, coming together to share ideas, inspire, and create is of great importance, and Tavernier knew this. In 1875, about 100 miles south of San Francisco, and only three months in the state, he created the very first studio in Monterey. He modeled it after a Parisian atelier, much like that of his teacher Barrios back in France. Mostly painting in black and white, the Monterey landscapes and Pacific Ocean opened his eyes to the magnificent colors before him, which he is most famous. Soon it became the mecca for visiting artists. The Monterey Peninsula included the towns of Monterey, Pacific Grove, and Carmel that lured tourists and students in from all over the world with its unique coastal scenery. The atmosphere in the cypress trees grew a mystique that pulled in these artists. At that specific time in art history, it was an essential area to have visited to even consider one as a real painter. This still studio launched the renowned coastal art colony that still survives today. Tavernier introduced a break from the Hudson River School style of art, 
He engaged a looser, more simple, subjective, harmonious style, and many evolved from French Barbizon tonalism and into colorful Impressionism. As money was not of importance, Tavernier was paid well with top dollars for his paintings, but his profligate lifestyle had a constant stream of debt collectors and sheriffs under his nose. In 1879, only three years in Monterey, he was essentially kicked out of the community as his behavior offended the local citizens. But of course, there are conflicting reasons as to why he really left. He headed back to San Francisco and opened a large, nicely lit studio with another artist who shared the same love of landscapes on Jackson and Montgomery streets. Even there, oftentimes, Tavernier and his partner tried to elude the creditors. His involvement in the San Francisco Art Association was like a thorn on the side of worthy officers. He did not agree with how the club was run, and so he was responsible for the formation of the Artists' Union in 1880. His failed attempt to form his own club, the Palette Club of San Francisco, was short-lived. As an active member of the San Francisco Bohemian Club, he was concerned of the integrity of the club. Founded in 1872, it was originally made up of writers, artists, poets alike. He questioned why bankers and other businessmen were accepted into the club as they possessed no bohemian or artistic abilities. On several occasions, Tavernier propped a cartoon upon one of the easels, each depicting his contempt for the non-artistic member. As quietly as he put them up, he took them down at the end of each meeting, no words, and walked away. The true bohemians of the club appreciated Jules Tavernier as a genius and respected him as a man. Still, Tavernier accrued more and more debt and wanted some change. The generosity of his friends afforded him a ticket to Hawaii, where his paintings of volcanoes garnered acclamation even from the royal court. His financial obligations were once again in default, and he was not able to leave the island unless settled. In 1889, his extravagant lifestyle led to his untimely death at 45 years old in Hawaii. Even then, his bohemian friends sent a large grave marker from across the ocean that stands high in the cemetery in Oahu. Love him or hate him, Jules Tavernier certainly made an impression with impressions, cartoons, illustrations, and paintings that have inspired, influenced, and made an impact on California's art history. The Significance of California Art Like any civilization, we must study its history in order to understand the development of different cultures. California encompasses a vast amount of land and originated with about 80 Native American tribes. Like individual communities, each tribe possessed certain beliefs. What is acceptable in one place may be unacceptable in another. The evolution of ideals and new discoveries had a direct impact on California art. From the indigenous roots to the multitude of contemporary pieces produced today, the development, growth, and transformation is relative to the current events of that time. Where ideology and principles may have remained the same, a melding of viewpoints, judgment, and approach is produced. For whatever the reason, we must go back and recognize the hows and whys in order to truly grasp the essence of California art. Although many Native American tribes existed in the area, there was a common thread to mesh their similarities together. Carefully chosen, hand-picked materials, an individual's design, patience, and craftsmanship is evident in some of the unique baskets, which makes each a one-of-a-kind piece of art. What started as practicality, these vessels now had a dual identity of function and beauty. Between 1848 and 1850, the California Gold Rush attracted a multitude of people in hopes of instant riches and a better life. People as far as the Orient and South America joined the droves of American settlers from across the continent. Some succeeded, but many did not. This sudden growth in population from a diverse background gave way to a melting pot of cultures. California was added to the Union in 1850, and the growth of communities, businesses, and tourists gave way to the unique identity that California is known. Ideals from across the seas and over the land spread throughout the state, allowing artists to be artists. Painters, photographers, ceramicists, illustrators alike found an untouched landscape ready to be seen through their eyes. From the poster ads luring those with a dream, the recognition of female artists simply recording history, the magnificence of Yosemite, the spirit of the Monterey Peninsula, 
all contribute to the unique art created in California. Clues from the great masters of tonalism and impressionism. Fresco techniques, murals. Beauty and color and form and pottery and the perfect lighting and photographs come together in an ever-changing world of art. California encompasses a vast amount of land. The amalgamation of ideas and new discoveries combined with a multitude of unique resources and people are what make California an extraordinary place. The foundation of cultures and principles remain a standing grace as the evolution of techniques continue to expand.